Welcome to the Quebec and New England Railroad Southern Division, HO Layout Video Number 80. Hello everyone. This uh, next series of uh, videos that uh, I'll be posting uh, are a little different than um, what I've done before, so I thought it uh, deserved uh, um, a bit of an introduction to explain what we're doing. Um, last year, you may recall, um, we did a, a series of videos on this uh, transload facility where we talked about um, how we were planning out the work, what materials we need, and then there were status updates there every so often just to, to, to describe where we were in the construction. Uh, what we're going to do um, this year with this uh, project is um, going to let the camera roll and uh, let the audience kind of participate along and as things happen, um, warts and all. So uh, you'll see me making mistakes, you'll see me mumbling to myself, not quite cursing, but mumbling anyway, uh, as I feel my way through uh, what what I'm doing to, to move the project along. Obviously I've edited out uh, portions where there's long pauses as I'm scratching my head or or frustrating, um, dealing with frustrating uh, problems and that, that take longer to solve. Um, so uh, comment uh, if you like this uh, different way of uh, uh, sharing with you what I'm doing uh, or if you don't like it that's fine too or if you find it boring. Uh, I should add that um, this uh, project involves some painting, uh, but as I don't have an indoor painting booth, uh, I use my garage for that, um, and it's still winter here. Um, the later episodes will have to wait a little bit, so this project will probably stretch out through uh, the next few months, actually. So I'll, I'll upload um, the first um, few short episodes that I have filmed uh, over the next uh, few weeks, uh, stretch them out a little bit. Um, you may find that the, the first episode kind of repeats what I'm saying here, but I, I thought it was important to uh, to uh, give you this introduction as it's a different kind uh, of video series. Anyway, uh, I hope you like it. Um, let's get started. This video series follows the efforts of the Q and NE Mechanical Department, yours truly, in converting a fully assembled and painted Intermountain GP10 into Q and NE GP10 number 70. Part 1, Disassembling the Hood, Cab, Running Boards, and Handrails. Welcome to the 2019 Q&E Modeling Project. Uh, um, first of all, uh, no, I'm not modeling the Illinois Central Gulf. Uh, this locomotive represents the um, final or missing uh, Q&E Roaster locomotive. Uh, I've always wanted uh, a low-nose uh, rebuilt GP9, and I was pleased when Intermountain Intermountain uh, released these. Uh, this represents uh, an early uh, 1970s experiment that the Q&E undertook uh, before making their decision to replace most of their GP9 fleet with uh, with a fleet of GP38s in 1971. Uh, there are many different versions of the Intermountain GP10s released. Uh, specifically, I was looking for one with uh, no dynamic brakes, the uh, four exhaust stacks, and this uh, large paper air filter. I came close. Um, I'm not crazy about this. I think it's an antenna on the roof, so that's going to have to come off. And um, you'll know, see that there's uh, headlights on the low nose. Wasn't really looking for that. Um, I haven't decided whether I'll keep those uh, or fill them in because uh, with the Q&E paint scheme and the stripe coming around the low nose, uh, there's no room for the for the small Q and E logo. I'll have to give that some thought. Uh, the reason I, I got it in the ICG paint scheme is it's a, a nice solid color. The color is close to the uh, Q and E red, so uh, if the lettering comes off easily, uh, I can use uh, the existing paint uh, as a primer coat, and and perhaps not have to go through the hassle of stripping the locomotive completely, uh, which would be a pain. Um, with all the little bits and details that I, I don't want to damage in, in, in having to scrub the paint off. So let's uh, get started with our deconstruction. First order of business is to remove the shell 
from the rest of the body. And we'll start with the couplers. Always an easy start. I don't think it's an easy start. Spoke too soon. There we go. Always have a place to keep your parts. I'm using the box from Intermountain. Let's see if this will be easier. Break the seal of the paint. All right, next. Let's see if there's anything in here. Oh, here's some more screws. Here, here. Mm, that might be it. It's a different size screw, right? We'll have to go get another screwdriver, a smaller Phillips. Be right back. Okay, we're back. With a handful of tiny little screwdrivers. Let's see if any one of these will work. Very small Phillips. Holy mackerel, that's even that one's too tight. Let's see if this works. Oh, that one's got it, even though it's not a Phillips. That's a very, very small screw. Tiny, tiny. There we go. All right, let's see if that does it. Seems to be coming out slowly. Wonder if there's a screw hidden here that I've missed. No, doesn't look like it. Keep going. Go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Oh, that's an awfully tight fit. Oh, man. You gotta be careful too because all the wires that are connected to the headlights are still attached. And this is also a sound unit, so there's a speaker hiding in here as well. There we go. Oh boy. There, all is revealed. Oh, look at that. Wonderful. At least this is designed in such a way that there's nothing attached to the shell. And all of this speaker and lights um, are directly uh, connected to the chassis. So that's actually a positive thing. It means we won't have to worry about messing with a bunch of wires as you often find with uh, some other manufacturers. Um, that'll make our job a lot easier. All right, next job is to see about these these handrails so we don't break them. Uh, so I'm going to go look for some debonder and, and 
again. We'll be right back. I'm sorry the camera wasn't rolling for what turned out to be a very, very messy activity. So here's a little lessons learned. Um, there are many versions of debonders out there. You'd think it's all the same chemically, but there's different strengths. I had picked up this one. Um, and, you know, they all say things like um, attacks most plastics. Um, this one here says removes paint and dissolves plastic. Um, I had started with this one, unfortunately. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a squeeze bottle type, even though it's a tiny uh, tip at the top. Um, it comes out um, fast. It's like a, it's a runny, very runny uh, liquid and as a result it um, really went to town on um, the handrail connections. Um, even though I, I blotted it out with with a paper towel right away, uh, it still managed to uh, to attack yeah, let's see if I can get this into focus. The handrail stanchions, you can see they're a little bit uh, affected. Mostly these two here. And as a result um, of the strength of this debonder, uh, it um, resulted in, in the nibs at the bottom um, turning to mush. So in the end, I, I basically had to take uh, a blade to uh, and just slice them off and then um, quickly dry it out and, and scrape the plastic smooth so at least it'll look fine once it's repainted. But the bottom line now is I've got each of these um, holes plugged with plastic, easy enough to fix by reaming it out with, with a drill bit, but the question is um, will I be able to reinstall that? Um, I imagine I can just with a tiny drop of super glue for each stanchion. Uh, failing that, um, I will uh, take a look and see if I can get a replacement set. Uh, I know Athern has them. I don't think it should be that much different for the for the uh, Intermountain ones if I can't get it from them. But uh, my first first attempt will be to to glue it in place uh, when all is said and done. Um, not the end of the world, but um, still, I don't like the way. The bottoms of some of them look. Um, so unfortunately, um, first casualty of, of trying to uh, deconstruct the intermodal, the uh, Intermountain um, GP9. So. I carried on from there, um, taking a look at the underside to see how the uh, body itself could be uh, separated from, from the running boards because that makes it easier to paint um, with the Q&E paint scheme. All this being black and and having to tape the bottom part of this um, to cover the black so the top would be red and the whole cab is red and the nose has a stripe around it so that's also two colors. So I really wanted all this to be separated from the running board to make it easier to paint. Uh, and in looking underneath, I saw, oh, okay, this is how they did it. They've got um, a line along here and here, uh, and maybe it was just a matter of putting a drop of uh, uh, debonder along there to help help it out. It looked like, and, and it turned out to be the case, that this was actually a, a snap in place. It's not just sitting there. There's actually a channel um, in the in the body that that are a groove that that fits into um, a, a corresponding um, tongue all the way around uh, here. So it you know I did go with with a debonder very sparingly and worked it uh, um, with with the blade, you know, opening up this this channel all the way around while while using my hands to slowly work it out. Um, it took time, a lot of patience, uh, but it did work in the end. It seems that there was. Um, quite a lot of, of glue used in some spots 
and others not so much. So uh, it was possible to figure out where where the glue was. And you can see here, um, there's a channel, there's the channel, I'm running my fingernail in it. I'll have to clean that out before I um, reassemble, before I paint actually. Uh, so as long as this channel is free and clear of, of the glue residue, um, it should be able to fit back in. So that also means correspondingly here, these areas where there was lots of glue, um, I'll need to, you know, clean that out, file that down, so everything snaps back into place properly. It looks like most of the glue was actually here and here. So that's that's doable, I think. That shouldn't be a problem. I then went along and tried to get the cab off. I did ultimately get it off, obviously, but uh, it had different tabs in it uh, in different locations, hidden locations where there was glue. So it turns out that under here, there was glue on this side and inside there. And I, want, I had to be careful because I didn't want the, the debonder running out and marring the paint here. So again, light touch all the way around, uh, making sure it didn't bleed through and slowly uh, running a blade along those joints to, uh, to loosen the connection. Uh, and then ultimately it did come off. There was actually another um, connection here you can see at the top of the body where the, where the cab sits on. Luckily that wasn't glued, that was just locked in place. That would have been a difficult one to, to debond because you see like that, that's the way it looked. There'd be no way to get the debonder in to, to unglue that. So fortunately that one um, came apart. And then the last piece was the nose. And it too had these tongue and groove sections around here, but there was also, um, another area just above, let's say the top of the battery boxes. So again, just very slow, patiently uh, working the blade in through here with a, with this um, less strong, I guess, um, debonder and slowly uh, but surely um, got it to come out. And it's still different, there you go. And it too has the same uh, tongue and groove arrangement and as long as I can ream that out, keep it clean and make sure the edges here are clean. You can see where that where the glue was. So I'll have to uh, clean that out. But that puts it in a good position to have this uh, painted black as one piece. Obviously I'll cover up the uh, uh, cab equipment and seats with some masking tape. I I've decided to leave the um, and handrails in place rather than to fool around and try and get them off. With all this little detail here, um, I don't want to risk it. In the end, the handrails are black anyway, so that's fine. Um, I just come along later with some uh, yellow paint on a brush uh, where, where, the, uh, where they're weight here. So uh, again, a bit of masking tape, small pieces to cover up the, uh, the hoses if I can, just to cover up the silver areas because the rest is black is fine. So I think um, all in all, um, things came apart in a way that uh, I can keep the project moving forward. Uh, it was a bit of a challenge um, at first, and we'll have to f figure out some way to deal with the, the handrails here when we're done, but I think we're okay. That's it for part one. Coming up in part two, removing the cab windows, wipers, number boards, headlights, and class lights. Thanks for tuning in.